Midnight Shift. Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Double Barrel Shotgun of Horror. This time a slightly different one in the sense that there's going to be two games by the same person. This is their first game, and their second game will be playing afterwards. And this is apparently has something to do with working in a factory of mannequins. Okay, so left click, direct, right click to flashlight, forward, backward, strafe, left and right. Let's have a look. Leave the building. Okay, if you insist. Apparently the primary focus of this game's development was on the atmosphere. And atmosphere is something I very much enjoy in horror games. So hopefully this will be spooky. Ooh, my size even got physics on the chairs. What have we here? Notices that I can't quite read. Oh, I said that's very that's very dark without it. Okay. I say it's very, very dark. So, presumably by the name, we are... Uh, there's naked bodies all over the place. We are a worker. I don't like this place. W. Hmm. Frankly, I don't blame you. It's a bit spooky. What does this sense? I wish I could read this, but I can't. Sleepiness is a safety hazard. It's always a safety hazard. You might... I don't know. Forget not to be scared of the monsters. Um, you may be subject to screening tests for illegal drugs and alcohol prior to hiring and during your employment. I suppose that's sensible enough. You don't want people turning up all drugged up and drunk to work. I can imagine that would be most annoying. They might start to think the mannequins were real. Or alive kill them. Well, I was there before, because I'd be willing to put money on the fact that they weren't. I don't like you. I'm going to say that right here and right now. I don't like you. Uh, you've been breeding, I see. I see. That's presumably why you're all naked. Oh, I see. You really are flesh and blood. I see. Couldn't resist the temptations of the the flesh. Yes, I appreciate the offer, but frankly, I, I've got a head. It's not a very good one. It's not a very attractive one. But it's the one I've got, and I'm sticking with it. Oh, well. A warehouse. Please clean up after yourself. Tell that to the... Tell that to the mannequins. They're the ones getting hot and heavy and steamy in here, not me. Imagine if you were walking along past the mannequin and you just heard a smack. <laughs> About waist level. That would be terrifying, wouldn't it? Especially when you're walking past people with their hands out at that angle. It'd be terrifying. Oh, dear. Okay. Many, many boxes many pieces of mannequin not much else. oh don't lose your head which is going to be quite tricky when they're all identical and you can't tell whose is whose I didn't like you previously but somehow I like you even less now what I also don't like is that your left eye seems to be sad and your right eye seems to be angry I find that even more confusing Severed parts. Like somebody's making a soup. A mannequin soup. Ah. A key. Exit key. I like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of these noises because they sound spooky, but I like the sound of an exit. Oh. Oh. Thought she was holding a gun. It's fine, it's just a hand. There's a storm rolling up. Oh. Don't stop looking at me for five seconds. Honestly, it's like walking down the street. You just stop looking at me. That's right, look at the sky. Oh, I kind of wish I hadn't looked at the sky. What is that? Okay, there's the eggs. Okay. No smacks. Thank you. 
I appreciate the lack of smacking. Alright, I don't want to go in there. I'm really happy not going in there. I'll live my life without re-enjoying the experience of going into that particular room. Oh, it's not over yet. I'm going to close the door behind me in case they chase me. Oh, hi. We know about your problem. It's kind of difficult to miss. It's rather a visual one. Oh, I see you doing those those chiropractic exercises the doctor was telling you to do. Good, good. It's always good to know. End of tape. Please rewind. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay, that that genuinely did have a nice atmosphere. That was a, that was a short and sweet. And that genuinely had a really nice atmosphere. It was creepy. It was unsettling. It developed, and it and that is something you don't see in a lot of horror games. They find something scary and they just roll. They're like, oh, there's mannequins, and they appear behind you when you're not looking. But this one actually made it. This actually made it develop in the sense the mannequins got scarier. The way that some of them faced you, the way that some of them had blood on them, the way they were coming out of the floor, they were hanging off the ceiling, they, they were reaching out to you, their heads were bobbing back and forth. It's genuinely quite impressive. I, I really appreciate seeing, seeing mechanics develop, because seeing things develop over time makes the experience so much more immersive. And that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Okay, so let's see what this, this developer's second game is like. Oh, okay, not even a menu screen. Okay, this one's called Urbex, which is apparently a, a spiritual successor and meant to be a sort of refinement of his work. 1.0. I see. Well, obviously the uh, the graphical style is, is, is different. There's a bit more detail in the world. It's, uh, there's actually quite a lot of detail in there, actually. Reminds me uh, quite a lot of Outlast, actually. Kind of bit of the evil within, but not quite as much. Oh, they've got sounds for the flickering lights. And crickets. Okay, I'm liking this so far. This is this is quite fun. This is quite impressive. Can I have the key? Yes, it has the key now. And what door, may I ask, does this go to? Not the big red door. The garage? No. What's through there? Is it a city? Yeah, it sounds like a city skyline. The question is, where does this key go to? What door does it open, and what horrors shall we find on the other side? Nothing. I really don't trust them out. The lockers very much remind me of our last. Open this? Nope. Hmm. So I'm assuming this is another storage facility, much like the much like the mannequin on. Okay, so there's some sort of a fuse box here. A wiring box of some kind. I don't seem to be able to interact with it though. Okay, so where do we go from here? Since this door doesn't open, right? No, in fact, I'm beginning to think this isn't even a door at all. It may just be boarded up. What's that? Simply a smoke alarm or something. Or smoke detector, rather. Hmm. Well, I'm slightly confused in terms of what I'm supposed to be doing. Where I'm supposed to be going. What I'm supposed to be interacting with. I miss something on one of these shelves, perhaps something in a box? Another key perhaps? Oh! A fuse. Sorry, I'm as blind as a badger. I should have seen that ages ago, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. Right, okay, so this fuse presumably goes into this box, which will help me get the power back on, which will perhaps open that garage door. Excellent. Okay, let's just 
bit of texturing. Hello. Are there any demons home? Or just many tin cans? No. I see nothing of consequence here. Nothing murderous. Nothing memory. Nothing worthy of a... Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll stop calling you a, a great big... A great big wuss and I'll actually... I'll actually be slightly nervous about my safety. Okay, so there's another fuse box, so I presume we need to find another fuse, which one would assume is in here. Is that it? No, that's a tin can. You can't restart a fuse box with a tin can unless you plan to just bludgeon the box with a can. Which admittedly might work, but... I'm not a qualified electrician, so I don't take my word for it. Aha! Uh -huh. Here is the fuse. I see. <gasps> so the noise we heard wasn't in the back of the other room, it was in the back of this room. <laughs> ah, you again. Hello. How are you? Nice ears. Is that the smoke alarm going off? Nice chiseled chin. Stop presenting thine curves. Oh, shit. <sighs> Sorry about the scar tissue. I hope that gets sorted out soon. Uh, perhaps we're in the same vicinity, we're just in a different branch of it. Your stony expression does not fill me with confidence as to my chances of survival. Okay, I'm not doing it. Hi! Yeah. I, I would have started running a long time ago, if I'm honest. I think I'm dead. Yep. The end. I'm dead. I died to a mannequin's paw through my belly button. Oh dear. Is there any more? No, I don't think there's any more. Okay, so while you listen to the lovely sounds of that car alarm going off. Okay, that was... That was in some ways better, in some ways worse. Um, in terms of the... In terms of the build-up, obviously it was a lot more based on auditory information rather than vision information. It did a lot more with sounds rather than the visuals of the mannequin slowly becoming more so. Um, it was certainly helped by the fact that I played the previous one, since I understood the danger of the mannequins and I understood the the reason for being nervous of them. Um, obviously, in terms of the you know the graphics and the cutscenes and the, the the sound design, you could describe it as being more professional. Although obviously the simpler designs and the more pixelated stars, they have a charm of their own, which has become a level of professionality in and of itself in a way. I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but overall, it was still very good. Um, the the finding of the fuses was a tiny, tiny bit frustrating in the sense that they were they were obviously a very small thing which was very easy to miss and the location, although not huge because of the reduced movement speed, it did take you a little while to do a whole circuit of it in order to find them. So that was not the easiest thing in the history of the universe to find. That's not like you know, a game-breaking thing or anything, you know, it does kind of slow the experience down a little bit um, from from how simple it seemed to be to and how natural it seemed to be to progress in the first one. So this one had its pros, it had its cons, it had its 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 improvements, it had its questionable choices. But overall they were both very good and I think this developer has quite a lot of promise in uh, in in horror games design. They clearly have a lot of interest and a lot of ability when it comes to making a good atmosphere, which is often is enough to make a horror game nerve wracking. Um, it's, it's often all you need and you know anything else that you can have on top of that is is fantastic because people often make the mistake of confusing horror with gore and thinking that a gory game is a horror game but in that circumstance it's a little bit off topic but 
this has been a short video, so I might as well, you know, use the time productively. Um, people confuse horror and gore as the same thing. Like, take Doom, for example. Doom is not a horror game. It's not a horror game. It's got a lot of gore in it, but that doesn't make it a horror game because the gore is not used to instill a sense of fear in you. It's there just to give a sort of a, a very visceral feel to the combat, which is fine. That's what it's there for. That's, that's, that's what it does. If you then take a game like The Evil Within, the first one at least, I haven't played the second one, so I, I'm just referring to the first one. That used gore in a different way to show how gore can be used to be unsettling and to show how things are, are strange and confusing and, and scary and makes you think, what caused this to happen, you know? And is that going to happen to me? Am I going to become one of these horrific monsters? So people often make the mistake of confusing horror with gore and they put gore in games in order to just say, oh well, you know, a horror game should have gore in it because gory is, 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 is scary, but it's not necessarily that way. Which is why atmosphere is often such a better thing to put in a horror game instead of gore, which this game does very well. It does the atmosphere, these two games rather, do the atmosphere well, they build them up well, they take advantage of both sound and light, they take advantage of common things that scare people, and overall they're very good. So I think this developer has a lot of potential. I'm looking forward to see if they make anything else in the future. Um, I know this was made either by one person or just a very small team over a rel relatively short amount of time and they're still very good, so I was quite impressed by these. I very much enjoyed playing them, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for joining me, look after each other and goodbye.